Welcome back to Delicate Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another What I'm Reading Right Now video. It is Friday morning when I'm filming this, so I feel very close in time to you unless I failed to edit this and get it up. Let's just tweak this. But yes, it's Friday morning, it's already very warm in my office, so let's talk about what I'm reading right now, what I'm going to be reading next, what I've already read, you know how it works, all of the things. The first thing I finished since last time we spoke was The Fabric of Civilization: How Textiles Made the World. Uh, this I actually really enjoyed, non-fiction, all about fabric, textiles, weaving, people who are doing innovative things in fabric. The overall thesis is that fabrics are so important to how we live both in our clothing and in other ways that advancements in technology for fabric were necessary for other advancements in technology to be made and they all interlink and it's very interesting uh, as i said last week i feel like the latter chapters are less strong or less interesting to me perhaps is a better way of putting it and i do think that it shies away a little bit from some of the exploitative elements of textile development and so such but it was an interesting read and I think that that wasn't really what the book was set out to do and there are other books that are set out to do that so I'm going to try and pick one of those up. I think I'm going to try and read Consumed by Aja Barba. I'm not certain because I can't find a copy of it in my local bookshop and I need to just get them to order one in. But yeah, I had a good time. It was decent enough. Um, would recommend particularly the earlier chapters if you're interested in this kind of thing. After that I finished The Darkening by Sunya Mara. This is a YA book that features a main character who grows up in the outer rings of the city. She's a fifth ringer uh, and they live on the kind of edge of where the storm, which is a thing that is both a storm and also sort of a supernatural event that curses people and has beasts in it that will kill you and so such. Uh, and our main character wants to learn magic that her father has, but he refuses to teach her. She learns some of it anyway. Her father gets taken captive by the royals who live in the first ring effectively. Through various circumstances, she ends up going and working and learning how to do iconomancy in the palace for the prince's guard sort of thing uh, and obviously the prince is very dreamy and it's a fairly standard YA plot. It's got some really interesting elements to it. I thought that a lot of the kind of caste system, the way it explored that was interesting. Um, I don't know if that's the right term, I think it is. I think had I not read so much YA both lately and in my lifetime, that I am somewhat burned out on it. I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more. Overall, I felt like it was perfectly fine. If you're excited for this, I think you will have a good time with it. It's different enough from most YA that I think you will still have fun, but I personally have read enough similar things, especially recently the I must pretend to be a part of the elite so that they won't know that I'm actually there to overthrow them. I'm a bit done with it. It's just, it's something that I've, I've read enough times and it always ends up with uh, a thing I don't like happening. But to tell you what that is would spoil the darkening because it does happen in the darkening. So you're just gonna have to trust me. This was pretty good. I gave it 3.75 stars because I'm a generous person. Then I finished a reread of A Psalm for the Wild Built. This is the first in the Monk and Robot series by Becky Chambers. I had a lovely time rereading this. It was wonderful. I actually did it by audiobook this time. I read it physically the first time and it's just lovely. It's just a really nice story about trying to find purpose and there is a, a tea monk and a robot and the robots have been gone for so long and I'm not going to try and explain the plot to you in detail because it's a novella and it's just I had a great time. I really, really love this. I think um, I was really interested to hear Angela's thoughts on it because um, Angela is in a very different position in life to where I am now. And I find that very fascinating because I think it's very much a book written as sort of a love letter to people who are going, help, I don't have a purpose. And I personally find that very encouraging and very nice. And I had a great time. Yeah, the audiobook is great. I'm very excited for book two. I will be reading it. I will be enjoying it. I'm sorry if you can hear the birds having an absolute screaming fit outside my window. If you came along to my reading sprints that I did on Sunday of last week, was it Saturday or Sunday? I genuinely can't remember. You'll know I was reading Circe, which I have indeed finished. I had a wonderful time with this. This is a Greek mythology retelling reimagining, collecting, giving it one through line, which is the witch Circe. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I liked this the first time I read it, but I think going back in again now, um, it's been so long since I read it that I'd forgotten most of everything that happened. And also having read Song of Achilles, and I think more importantly, having not read Greek mythology retellings for quite some time, this just really hammered home how good a writer Madeline Miller is. I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was great. And there will be an overbooked video in early September I think so stay tuned for that if you want to know but in the meantime know that I really like this and it holds up to a reread. A nice short one I finished Binti by Nadia Korafor. This is just the first one I am planning on reading the second one and the third one in the coming weeks. I just need to get my 
get my hands on them but I've owned this for ages I really really like this it's I think it's a fantastic really short novella more of a short story than anything else actually um Binti is the first one of her people to go to university in this special space university and everyone sort of says Binti you shouldn't go this is a bad idea uh, but she gets on the ship anyway ready to head off and her ship is attacked by the Medusa, which are kind of like jellyfish that have been at war with humans for a very long time or at war with Binti's civilization for a very long time. Binti is able to communicate with them through means and to say more than that would probably ruin it because as I say this is only 200 pages? Eight, only 89 pages that goes to show how good I am at estimating page length. I really think this is well worth reading. I will report back when I've read books two and three as to whether I think the whole series is well worth reading but I just really love Nadia Korfo's writing style. I think it just it's so wonderful, it creates such good imagery in my head, and yeah, I, I had a great time. It did make me want to reread Remote Control though, which I also very much loved. And I think lastly I finished The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz. I really enjoyed this, I think this is a fantastic book. With where the world is at the moment, particularly where it concerns reproductive rights, I actually think maybe, maybe if you are very sensitive to that, stick away from this one, because it is very much the thing of, this was written three years ago, and it really just, it hasn't got better, it's got much worse since then. Time travel is a thing in this world, a lot of people can do it, but we have a group of women and non-binary time travellers who are set, their goal, their mission is to stop the rollback of women's rights, uh, and they want to get to a timeline where abortion is legal in the United States. Because some of them can remember a timeline where that was the case, but it is not the case now. And they encounter groups in time who are trying to stop women's rights, there's also a backstory to some of the characters. This is a fantastically crafted book, it's really really interesting. The different threads of it, it's not just about reproductive rights, but it's not just a character piece, it's just just, ooh, someone's trying to talk to me on Discord. So yes, it's absolutely wonderful. I really, really enjoyed this. Really, really heavy, very heavy. Do not go into this if you're having a sensitive day or you're not in the mood for that really kind of like, oh, this hurts me deeply kind of fiction. But I thought this was just so well written and it makes me really excited to reread Autonomous in the near future. But again, overbooked video for this coming in September. So what am I currently reading? I'm reading three things. I'm still reading The Count of Monte Cristo. I am 34% of the way through, which is not too shabby. I've been enjoying that on my very leisurely dog walks, although it's been way too warm to walk the dog recently. She's she gets too hot, she overheats and then she won't eat her dinner. But I am very much enjoying the story. I have the temptation, the, the temptation that always comes over me when I have a very long book to read that I know someone will have done a synopsis for to look up what happens, but I'm resisting the urge because I want to enjoy this and I am enjoying it, but it is taking quite a long time. I'm hoping to finish that within the next two weeks, so fingers crossed. I'm still reading the first binding and I haven't read any more of it since I was doing sprints last weekend. Uh, I am on 23% of the way through that. I'm trying to do 10% every now and then but it's not working very well. I am really enjoying the book, it's just not something that I'm gravitating towards at the moment but I think that's in part because what I really want is physical books and everything is ebooks at the moment. So yeah I just need to charge my kindle, sit down somewhere comfy and really get to grips with some more of that. I'd like to get to halfway through by the middle of next week. By the time I film the next video I'd like to be at least 50% of the way through that. And then lastly I have indeed started The Daughter of Dr Moreau by Silvia Moreno Garcia and I'm loving it so far. It's wonderfully weird. You know how Mexican Gothic started and you were like this is a bit iffy but I don't really think it's gonna go too weird and then it goes to a very weird place? Daughter of Dr Moreau's there right from the start. Just right from the start being a bit weird and I'm very much enjoying it. Sylvia Moreno Garcia writes wonderful atmosphere, we know this, uh, the characters are really interesting, I don't know where the plot's gonna go, I'm having a great time. Did I look up the book that it's a reimagining of? No I did not, but uh, I might afterwards just to see what that's like. The only other thing I'm meant to pick up this week, so I've still got two books technically to finish, Three books technically to finish if you count the first binding, but I think we all know that's not going to happen. Um, the other book I want to pick up is An Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. I'll put the cover up so you can see it. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get to that this weekend. I was thinking about doing some um, Yalk FOMO. We're not at Yalk, but we can still hang out sprints maybe tomorrow, maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. I will let you know. I'll probably put it on the Discord and on Twitter if I am. It just sort of depends how hot it's going to be in my office, because if it's way too warm, it's not happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, if you would like that, let me know in the comments. I have a lot to read next week, some of which is uh, exciting, some of which I don't quite know how it's going to go, but I have things including Spinning Silver, uh, what else is on this list? The Jasmine Throne reread, The Book Eaters, Long Shadow. Oh, it's going to be great, uh, but I do need to 
crack on with this week's editing if I'm going to have time to do reading next week. So I should probably make a move after we talk about new releases. So The Darkening, which I already mentioned, is out this week. I didn't realise until I looked at my spreadsheet, but yes, that was out on the 5th. If you would like to read that, you can read that now. And also uh, the new Laura Olympus edition. I have volume one sitting next to me here, um, but the second volume is also out. I have a copy coming from Illumicrate because I got tempted uh, and I know I don't need it, but I did need it. So I'm gonna have nice shiny Illumicrate matching editions and I'm very excited about it. How about you? What have you been reading? What have you been up to? Are you a person who wants to come to Yalp reading sprints? Let me know all of these things down in the comments below. If you haven't already, while you're commenting, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. Nothing makes me feel more loved and appreciated than my patrons over on Patreon who support the channel and make videos like this possible, as well as getting sneaky bonus content and early access to videos. If you would like to join their number, you can click that link in the description along with my Discord link and my Twitter if you want to come have chill chats about books. Thank you so much for watching, that's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. I nearly said the fabric of another timeline.